All right, good morning. It's so good to see you this morning. I know that there's um, still people filtering in, people coming up from uh, small groups and all that kind of thing. But uh, we want to say right off the bat this morning, if you are a guest or a first-time visitor in our house, or maybe it's just your first time back in a long time, we are so glad that you're here this morning. We couldn't be happier. Thank you for coming. We know there are a million other places you can be on Sunday morning. And so we want to say... Thanks for being here. We love you, and we are so glad you are here today. Um, we want to go ahead and pray, invite God to come in and change our hearts and change our minds this morning. And so if you would, uh, would uh, you pray with me and for me as we get ready to start the service today. Uh, Father, we come to you, and God, we want to thank you for your faithfulness and for your goodness towards us, God. Uh, today, more than anything, God, we want to lift your name up. God, we want you to be lifted up. God, you must become greater and we must become less. God, I pray that you would uh, change our hearts and our minds today. God, I pray that you would help us uh, realize who you are and what you have called us to do. God, we love you this morning. We thank you and we need you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, all right. Got to turn it on now. If you would stand with us and sing this one this morning. Victory in Jesus. Need a book, it's 246. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming he loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day i'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory in jesus my savior forever he 
sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is due him he plunged me to victory this morning next Sunday you want to be here all right next Sunday we want you to be here because next Sunday is pastor appreciation Sunday we're having soups and salads and we have a sign-up sheet in the back for you as you go out we want you to turn left and look down at that list and look at the things we need and some of your names is already on there so make sure you know what, what you've got you down for you may be bringing two or three things didn't know that so we're looking forward to next Sunday as we celebrate Pastor Appreciation Dinner right after church. At this time, the praise team will be coming up singing for us this morning. Good morning. I like tell you what, if, if you could be as sweet as this bunch up here, it'd be just unbearable. Um, if you want to stand up, let's worship together and uh, go across the aisle, give somebody a big hug.
Then sings my soul, my Savior God to
Am I on now? Oh, yeah. You can hear me now. We want to say right off the bat, one more time, if you're a first-time guest with us, or maybe it's your first time in a long time, hey, we love you, and we're glad you're here. Are we glad they're here, church? <laughs> Getting better at that. Uh, we want to let you know that... Uh, Right in front of you, in the seat in front of you, there's a little card. And if you've never filled one out, if you want some information about the church or you want to be connected to the church uh, through email and through text message, you can fill one of those out today and turn it in uh, when the offering plate comes around. And we want to let you know that if you're a guest in our house, when that offering plate comes around, that's the only thing we want from you is that little card. We don't, uh, we don't want your money. Uh, we, uh, we believe the Lord will provide for our financial needs. We don't want anything from you today. We want something for you. Uh, we want to see Jesus change your life. Uh, and so I want to kind of catch you up if you've not been here in a little while. Over the last few weeks, we've been in a series uh, that we've called Next Steps. And here is what we've said in this series. We believe that everyone here wants to move closer to God. And even if you don't believe in God, if there was a God, you would want to be close to Him. We believe that everybody here wants to move closer to God. But sometimes we don't know how. As the church, we've been guilty in the past of saying, hey, you need to get saved. And you get saved and then you're kind of like, now what? <laughs> now what do I do? But in this series, we want to help you take a step towards God. We want to help you take that next step. And so whether you've been following Jesus for like 20 minutes, maybe you, you gave your life to Jesus just a few minutes ago or something like that. If you did, that's great. But Or if, you, if you're there or if you've been following Jesus for like 50 years, we all have a step to take in God's direction. We all have a next step. And so what we've said in this series is that the first step that we have to take in order to move in God's direction is to start following Jesus. You cannot move in God's direction without a relationship with Jesus. You just can't do it. Jesus is the only way to God. And so we believe if you want to move closer to God, you have to surrender your life to Jesus. After you've done that, we believe that the next step is baptism. To publicly declare your faith in Christ. To say, hey, I was going that way, and now I'm going this way. I'm put my faith in Christ, and He's changed my life. After that, we believe that you need to be connected to a local church. Now, we're not the only church in town, and so if, um, if this is not your church, you need to be connected to a church. You don't have to be connected here. There's plenty of other believers gathered around the county this morning. And they're going to heaven too. But you need to be connected somewhere to some group of people. You need to lock arms and commit to one another in Jesus. Then last week we said you need to be connected to a small group. And so here at our church we have groups that meet all through the week. And we get together and we study the Bible and we talk about Jesus and we believe that if you want to move closer to God, you need to be connected to one of those groups. 
Because if you want to get closer to God, you have to get closer to God's people. And so, that was last week. And today we're going to talk about serving in the local church. Serving, taking a part of the local church. But before we do that, I want to pray one more time and ask God's hand to be on us during this message. Um, Father, we come to you. God, we want to say right now, we rely fully and totally on you. God, you are all that we need in this moment. God, we ask that, that in these next few moments, God, that you would open our, our ears to hear what you have to say to us. God, I pray that you, would, that you would stir something in our heart, God, that you would make a difference in our lives, God, that you would change the way we see and the way we believe about you. God, we love you this morning. We thank you, and, and we ask you to be in, this, in these next few moments. God, we love you. Through Jesus, we pray. Amen. So, uh, for the next 20 minutes, or 25 maybe, I want to talk about serving in the local church. And here's, here's what I believe. And if you don't take anything else away here is, is the bottom line of the message. Serving in the local church is one of the highest honors of the believer, of a Christian. It is one of the highest honors because when we serve in the local church, we are participating in God's plan for the earth. And so, um, God has a plan for earth. I don't know if you realize that or not. But if you remember in uh, Jesus' model prayer or the um, Lord's prayer, it says, let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so God's plan for the earth is to make earth look more like heaven. The way he does that is through his people, the church, the church. And so when we participate in the church, when we work as the church together, we become part of that plan to make earth more like heaven. Do you see what I'm coming from there? Tom Rainer, who is the president of Lifeway, says it this way. The local church is God's plan A for the world, and there is no plan B. And so if the local church is not active, if the local church is not working, if the local church is divided and separated and ineffective, then that community cannot be reached. It's key that every community have a working effective local church and so that's why we believe in missions going places and planting churches building into leaders and so what what we believe is that the local church is god's plan for jackson county for the state of kentucky for the united states and for the rest of the world that is god's plan is the local church and so we want to be a part of that God is inviting you to be part of his plan. Think about that. That's like going into business with Bill Gates. You meet Bill Gates and he says, hey, I've been thinking about starting a business. You want in? You put in what you've got, I'll put in what I've got, and we'll see if we can make something happen. I'd be like, all right, <laughs> I'll give it a whirl. But seriously, that's what partnering with God in the local church is like. It's, it's set in your favor because you have the Holy Spirit inside of you who is God and will give you the strength and the wisdom you need to do what He's called you to do. God's calling us to be a part of something so much bigger than ourselves. It's a big deal. To get to partner with God in our local community. Listen up. He didn't have to include us. He didn't have to include you. He didn't have to include me. He's God. He can do what he wants. But he has allowed us to be a part of what he's doing. 
He's allowed us in. He chose me and you to be a part of what He's doing on planet Earth. Here's the first thing you need to know today. This is going to shock some of you guys, but here we go. Every single believer, if you're a believer in this house today, this applies to you. Every single believer is called into the ministry. Every single believer is called into the, into the ministry. Whether they're small, whether they're old, if they're somewhere in between. When I first started preaching, people would ask me, when did God call you into the ministry? Well, God called me into the ministry when I was six years old and gave him my life. When I became a believer, I was called into the ministry. When you became a believer, you got called into the ministry. The guys who stand up in the pulpit and the uh, people who sing up here, stand up here and sing, I'll get it right in a minute, they're, they're called into the ministry, but so are you. Maybe not to preach, and I know God's not called some of you to sing, I've heard you, but He's called you to do something. God's called you to do something. He called you in to the ministry. When you're born again, the Holy Spirit moves inside of you and He gives you a gift. And that gift is to be used for God's glory to serve other people. Let me show you this. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 says, For just as the body is one and has many members... And all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. And so we're all part of Christ's body. You and I, when you are born again, when you are born into the family of God, you are part of Christ's body. And so we know that Christ came. He was incarnate. He came as a man. He lived 33 some odd years, he died, resurrected, and then he ascended into heaven. And so Christ has no body on planet earth except yours, except mine. We are Christ's body. Christ no longer dwells on planet earth. He, he's seated by the Father in heaven. And so now our bodies become extensions of his body, and we live as Christ's representatives on planet earth. We are all part of the body. But if part of the body is not functioning, the body is not healthy. You don't think much about your pinky toe till you stub it on something. Anybody ever been walking in the dark through the house and somebody moves something? Gets you every time, don't it? Every single part of the body is important. What I do up here on Sunday morning is no more important than whoever's cleaning the bathroom or picking up the garbage or doing whatever else. We are all called into the ministry. We're called to be a part. We're all in this together. And so, if you're here this morning, you're a believer and you're part of this local church and you're not serving, you're preventing us from being all that God's called us to be. We need what you have. We need what you have. God's given to each a gift. Every single person has a gift. You may feel useless in this place this morning. But God has put inside of you a gift, a calling. He has called you into the ministry. And you have a part to play. And it is an important part. The church will not be all that it could be without you. I want you to know that this morning. We cannot be all that we can be without you. We need you to be a part. God's given you a unique gift, and, and we need it in our body. In 1 Peter 4, 10 and 11, this is what it says. As each has received a gift, 
Use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God. Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies. In order that, so this is the reason we do everything that we do. Everything God, in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. The reason we serve, the reason we've been given a gift, is so that we can bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. That is our purpose. That is our call. That God has given us a gift to speak or to serve or to love or to help whatever your gift may be. Whatever your gift is, the goal is that God would be glorified through you, through Jesus, and through the local church. We are called to be God's servants to the people around us. We're called to serve and love each other in such a way that the world takes notice. That when the world looks into the local church, they see people so committed to loving people. They see people so committed to serving one another and serving the community. That when they look in, they have to say, there is something different about those people. They have something that we do not have. We're called to serve and love and use our gift. Are you using your gift to build up the local church? Are you using your gift? Are you using it to make a difference? There is a place for you in the local church. There is. We have all kinds of things going on and we need you to be a part. Here's what I love about the local church. If you need points, this is the second point. The local church is not built on the gifts or talents of one man. The church is built on the sacrifices of the many. The church is not built on me. The church is not built on you. The church is built on the sacrifices that we all make. The church is built on the sacrifices, the money that we've all gave, the time that we've all gave. The reason that Bomb Baptist Church is here 95 years after it was established here in this community is because there's been people who are committed to be here. Committed to love here, committed to serve here, committed to give here. The local church is built on the sacrifices of the many, not on the gifts or talents of one person. I'm honored to be the pastor of this church. I think it's one of the greatest churches on planet earth today. It, it really is one of my honors to get to do this lead this congregation. But I want you to know this church could go on without me. I told you a couple weeks ago I'm not going anywhere. Don't fire me because it's going to make it awkward when I keep showing up. This church could go on without me. This is not built on me. This is built on the foundation that Jesus laid for us and the sacrifices that we as a people have made. It's not built on one person. It's built on everyone and what everyone has contributed. You're just as important as I am. I appreciate that you're going to have me a dinner next week. But you're just as important as I am. Listen, if I don't show up next week, church goes on. If you all don't show up next week, church does not go on. <laughs> It would be really weird to stand here and preach to myself. You are important. We miss you when you're not here. 
We need you to be a part. This church is here because of your commitment, your love, your service, your giving. If it were not for you, we would not be here today. This church has been here 95 years. Seen God's faithfulness 95 years. But if we want to see it go 95 more, it's going to require us to keep loving, keep serving, keep showing up, keep giving of ourselves, giving of our time, our resources. That's what makes the church go on. Is that when the people commit to loving each other, each other and serving each other and helping each other. We have to commit and we have to sacrifice our, our time and our energy and our resources to the kingdom of God. So we can see it pushed forward in our community. Our goal as a church, I think I've told you this before. Our goal as a church is to impact this community in such a way that in a hundred years from now, when they write the history of this community, that they couldn't write it without talking about what God has done through this church. What will our impact be 100 years from now? If Jesus doesn't come back, what will our impact be? Will we change our community? If we want to do that, it starts with us locking arms and committing to serve one another and serve our community. Service is where it all starts. We have all kinds of places where you can serve. We have kids ministries, youth ministries. We have a hospitality team. We have a media team. We need people to pick up garbage. We need uh, people to mow grass and paint walls. We need people to make coffee on Sunday morning. We need uh, people to put out connect cards. There's something for you, to be, for you to be doing. We need people to hug people. Any huggers in here? We have a place for you. We need you to be hugging people on Sunday morning. Some of you just said, I'm never coming back. <laughs> We're never coming back here. They're huggers. Uh, we have a place for you to serve. We need you. We need you to be a part. Um, anybody in here like biology? Did you have biology like in high school or, or sometime? Uh, we hope that you're ready for a biology lesson because I'm about to give you one. You ready? Some of you just tuned out. Uh, in all of the living things, all living things can be classified into one or two categories. Um, and it's by what they eat. It's the first category is called a producer. Okay, and a producer produces its own food. It gets its energy from the sun or from the ground, and so plants through photosynthesis. You all are taking notes, ain't you? Produces its own food. So most plants don't eat other plants. You, when was the last time you seen a corn plant eating another corn plant so it could survive? Producers produce their own food. Then there's a second category called a consumer. Consumers eat producers and other consumers. And so producers can go on without consumers, but consumers cannot go on without producers. Are you with me still? You can also twist that and use it to identify humans. And so there's two kinds of people. There are producers and there are consumers. A producer raises their own food. Which means like you raise all your food. Uh, if you're going to be a true producer, you have to grow your own garden. You have to uh, raise your own whatever kind of meat you eat. You have to produce everything that you consume. Or you can be a consumer and you can go to Walmart the easy way and get it. 
Amen. Is there anybody that's a consumer in here? I like to just go to Walmart and get my stuff. I don't like plowing gardens. I don't. I did, I did that a bunch, and I don't like it anymore. And so I, when I need something, I just go to Walmart and buy it. Since the turn of the um, early 1800s, or late 1800s, early 1900s, America has been a majority consumer. There are still a few producers in America today, but for the large part, we are a consumer nation. Okay? So that means most of us in this place today will go to Walmart or McDonald's or somewhere like that when we need some food. Right? Have I read you wrong? Are you all really farmers when I, and I don't see it? Um... Being a consumer with your food is okay. That's what I do. But being a consumer when it comes to church is not okay. And so some people come into church and they come looking to be served. They're looking for what they can get out of church. They're looking for, this is the Christian word, they're looking to be fed. And so, when they come to church, they're looking for what they can get out of church. Okay? Stay with me. I know I'm on toes already. Uh, this creates a real problem in the church. When you are all consumers. That means that there's a few people who are producing spiritual significance in the church there's a few people who are serving there's a few people who are working in the church and everybody else consumes that's not the model that christ gave us here's the problem it creates people jump from church to church to church to church because they're looking for what church can provide to their needs the best don't get me wrong, the, the church does need to provide some of your needs, like community and like a, a place to serve and stuff like that, but Sunday morning is not where you get fed. It's quiet out there. We're not called to be consumers in the church. We're called to be producers. And so when we come to church, we're not coming expecting to get something, but we're coming bringing something with us. Here's what that looks like. Some of you all, the only time, I'm, I'm not trying to make you feel bad this morning, honest. I'm just trying to get at a problem. And so some of you, the only time that you eat anything of spiritual significance, so to speak, is on Sunday morning. And so if you consumed physical food like you consumed spiritual food, we would have the skinniest bunch of people in town. Eat just one time a week, Sunday at 11. Do you know what I'm talking about? If somebody comes up to me and says, I'm not being fed, I already know that they are a consumer. Producers get their food from the sun, not from some man standing in the pulpit on Sunday morning. You can't expect me to feed you. I don't come to your house and feed you physical food. Nobody, when you get hungry physically, you go find you something to eat. I can tell. I can tell. I do too. But when you get spiritually hungry, that'll cost you. When you get spiritually hungry, you blame it on the pastor. My job description is found in the New Testament, and it is to prepare the saints for the work of the ministry. I'm called to prepare you on Sunday morning. I can't feed you through the week. 
If you're not touching that Bible, if you're not praying, if you're not listening to worship music, I can't do nothing for you. I can preach the best sermons on Sunday morning that you ever heard. Amen. That's good. <laughs> but if you don't do nothing through the week with it, it's not going to sustain you. You have to put in your part. It doesn't matter what I do up here on Sunday morning if you refuse to do anything with it through the week. And so, the problem is we have a consumer mentality when it comes to church. We need to be people who are read up and prayed up when we get here on Sunday morning. We need to be bringing with us. I'm not asking you to bring a sermon. I'm not asking you to bring a song. I'm asking you to come full of the Holy Spirit. Consumed by God. Not coming to consume something from the people who are up here. I, this is a place where you can come and you can be fed on Sunday morning. And I promise my, to try my best to give you something that will help you and encourage you. But when you come here, this is not all you need. You need more than this. We have to be bringing something with us, not just expecting to take something away from us. We need to be producers, not consumers. We need people who are bringing something to the table, not just expecting to get something from Sunday morning service. We need to be here to serve and not just be served. Mark 10.45 says this, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. When Jesus came, if anybody deserved to be served, it was Jesus. If anybody on planet earth ever deserved to, to sit in big mansions and have servants come and run around and wash his feet and wash his hands and wash his hair and, and to bring him everything he needed. That was Jesus. And yet, even the perfect man didn't come to be served, but to serve. If we want to be Christians, Christ-like, little Christs, you cannot skip serving. Jesus' life was marked by service. And if you want to be like Christ, you have to serve. There is no way around it. Let me make this clear. There's plenty of opportunities outside of our church where you can serve. Great places, great organizations where you can serve. Okay? Don't get me wrong. Plenty of places. But I believe, and I encourage you to serve in those places. Go, work, do, that's great. But there is something special about serving inside the local church. There's something special. Just try it. You'll, you'll, you'll get it when you, when you try it. Um, we need you to serve, okay? I think I made that clear so far. We need you to serve. But even more than we need you to serve, you need to serve. Let me show you this. Um, scientists have discovered that one of our deepest human needs is what they call transcendence. I'm above my pay grade right now. Just stay with me a minute. Um, transcendence, and it's the need to go beyond oneself. It's a psychological term, I think. Um, but in other words, transcendence is the need to serve other people. To leave a legacy. To go beyond our small, concentrated world and to accomplish something bigger than ourselves. We need that. It's one of our deepest, even more than food and water, it's one of our deepest needs. We need to have that feeling. We can't be content without the feeling we get from serving other people. Those are secular scientists saying that. 
I want to show you this in a little bit different way, if I could. Um, throw up that picture, guys, if you don't care. Um, here's a picture of the area around where the Bible was um, take, taking place. It was written here, too, most of it. But um, in this picture you see up here, that top... Uh, little dark hole is called the Sea of Galilee. And we read a lot about that a lot. And uh, Jesus was around there a whole lot. We see him crossing it. We see him walking on it. All kinds of crazy stuff. But right around that Sea of Galilee, there was all kinds of cities because it was a great fishing lake. There was all kinds of fish in this Sea of Galilee. And it was the source of life for that area. Everybody wanted to be close to it. Everybody wanted to be uh, near it because of the life that came from this Sea of Galilee. The Dead Sea, right down here at the bottom, is just 63 miles away. And if you notice, it's actually fed by the Sea of Galilee. Nothing can live in the Dead Sea. Nothing. There is no source of life in the Dead Sea. There's no cities around it because nobody wants to be close to it. Do you know what the difference in these two are? It's just 63 miles away. Let me show you. The Sea of Galilee has water coming in and water going out. Okay? It keeps the water fresh. It keeps... Oxygen in the water, it provides life. The, sea of Gal or the Dead Sea has water coming in, but no water going out. There's no water flows out of the Dead Sea. Our lives are very similar to these two seas. If you have people pouring into you, and then you're turning around and pouring into other people, serving other people, loving other people, like you've been loved, your life is going to be marked by life. Not just your life, but you're going to have life, you're going to have joy, you're going to have contentment. But if you're one of these people who come to church and you never pour out of yourself, if it's always just about you, and people are pouring into you, and you're uh, even if you're reading your Bible, and even if you're coming to church, and it's all about you, all about you, your relationship with God is going to grow stagnant, stale. And you're not going to be happy. And you're going to be discontented, and you're going to be a little bit angry with everybody. Our lives have to be flowing into and flowing out of. We need that movement in our life to keep us fresh, to keep us focused. If not, you're going to end up like the Dead Sea. Yeah, you may get into heaven, but when you get there, you'll wish you had done something with your life. We need to serve. It keeps us fresh. It keeps us alive in our walk with Jesus. In order to live this life to the fullest... We need to be poured into, and then we need to turn around and pour out of us and into others. You need to serve, because when you serve, it'll bring new life into you. You'll have a fresh fire in you for Jesus and, and His purposes on planet Earth. And so, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you today, take your next step and start serving. Just try it. Here's how you do that. Pull out that card I was telling you about earlier. If you want to serve, if you want to take that next step and start serving, fill out the card, circle, I want to serve, or whatever it says, and put it in the offering plate in a few minutes. It's as simple and as easy as that. I will call you. Or if you have some place you want to serve. Write it beside it. And I'll get that ministry leader to call you. And you can talk about 
serving in whatever area you want to serve in. We don't make you go anywhere, but we want you to serve somewhere. It's as simple as that. Fill out that card and we'll get in touch with you about taking that next step. Sound good? Glad both of you came today. So this whole series has been about taking your next step. We got a couple more weeks left, but let me ask you this morning. What does that look like for you? What does your next step look like? Is it time for you to get baptized? You've been putting it off, dreading it. No, you need to, but you've not yet. Is it time for you to get baptized? Is it time for you to finally join the church? To take that step and say, hey, I'm committed to be here. I'm committed to you as a people. I'm committed to God's purposes and plans in this place. Is it time to join the church? Is it time to join a small group? Get your life connected to other people's lives so that you can grow closer to God. Where are you at today? Where are you at today? Maybe today you need to take that first step towards God. And that's to start a relationship with God by surrendering to Jesus Christ. We believe that salvation can be summed up into one word, and that's surrender. We believe and we confess Jesus as Lord, and then we surrender our lives to Him. We say, Jesus, we believe in what you've done, and in response to our belief in what you've done, we surrender everything to you. We surrender our wants, our desires, our plans, our dreams, everything in our life, we surrender it. To you. We believe that Jesus, about 2,000 years ago, was God's perfect Son, that He came to earth, He lived a perfect life, and He died in our place. Because we couldn't be connected back to God, He done the work we could not do to connect us back to God. He paid our price. And when we surrender to Him as Lord, when we give Him our lives, when we hand everything over to Him, He pays for our sin, pays our price, and brings us into His family. It's as simple as that. Surrender your life to Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. Oceans deep, my faith will stand, and I will call upon your name, and keep my eyes above the waves, when oceans rise, my soul abounds in deepest waters, your sovereign hand will be my guide, where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you never fail and you won't stop. So oh. 
to rest is without borders let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me take me deeper than my feet could ever wander and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my savior spirit